The owner of this Land Rover saw the video of all the dirt and rubbish underneath it and was amazed how bad it was. So he's asked me, can I get it washed off? Well, not so easy here in town. Nobody wants to touch anything like that because it's dirty. So, I volunteered for the job reluctantly. I don't really want to do it, but I'm gonna do it. Now, it's not gonna be a quick job. Uh, it's gonna be long, so I'll just sort of leave the camera running and do some edited highlights. The thing is, it's going to rain today, well that doesn't make any difference because I'm going to get wet anyway. And I'm going to get so wet, I'm not even going to put, you know, a rubber suit on. Waste of time. It's just as easy to throw these clothes in the wash when I've finished and jump in the shower. I will be putting goggles on because there's spray and dust all over the place. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the car. Fortunately, this um, bull shit bar thing at the front has got what's called a receiver, square inch receiver, so I can I put a, a pintle type adapter on the front so I can lift it up and then with the stands here I'm going to put the stands underneath so it's nice and safe and also keep the forklift with a you know eight ton strap on it just in case so it should be okay. I'm going to take the wheels off and make a proper job. Um, again I'm not looking forward to it and um, the thing is, I can't rust proof it straight away because it's going to be too wet. It needs to dry out for a few days before you put any rust proofing on, but it won't gather the amount of rubbish that's underneath this. <coughs> so, let's get on with it. So I thought we'd have a quick look before and after. Obviously this is the front. And you can see how caked on all that mud is. Look at that, it's terrible isn't it? Alright, so that's that. That's the inside of the wheels. Let's go and have a look at the other side. Now I have got it supported. Um, it's on the forklift, it's on two stands, it's got blocks under the back, it ain't going anywhere. So that's good. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this side. Yeah, it's all kicked up, eh? Look at that. It's really bad. So we're going to wash all that lot off. Now what we're going to use, let's have a look in the old shop. This Karsha HDS 750. Got it second hand and it didn't work. And all it was was the temperature switch that wasn't working. So that was a thousand dollars just for that machine. But it's very very good and puts out a lot of hot water. Now I am going to use two different ones. I'm going to use this one down here for getting the, the thick off at a distance and then I made this special one here that goes at 90 degrees. However I've got to change the nozzles over because this one's all worn out but uh, that's not a big deal. So it's going to take me a wee bit of time then I've got to crawl underneath and get underneath there. I'm not looking forward to it. So I've got myself set up with some suitable safety equipment. I said I wasn't going to put a jacket on, but I found my sandblasting jacket. Look at that, isn't that neat? A mate of mine made that for me a long time ago. Got my name on it. And also a Britpart hat. Just to prove it, it's a Britpart one bear back. Send me a hat, I shall some I shall power wash for you too. A pair of goggles. So that'll keep the thick off. And I've also got my Dunlop rubber Wellington boots on. My jeans are going to get soaked. I'm not bothered about that. I'm going to get wet and filthy. Well, I'm sort of like that anyway. So, <coughs> let's get on with it. So I'm going to put this camera kind of far back, but I'll put it on zoom and I'll just show you how this comes up.
say for my appearance, I'm knocking off for a cup of tea. I've been on this for about two and a half hours now. Man, that stuff's hard to get off. Well, it isn't, it isn't. That pressure washer is about, I don't know, and it's 80 Celsius or something like that, or even more. And around about 2,000, 2,500 PSI. I had to stop to put a narrow tip in it because what's happened is it's had wax oil on it before. The wax oil is not too bad to get off normally. But then somebody sprayed it with like a body Schultz type stuff. Now that is difficult to get off. Uh, and also with the steam coming up and the water vapour oh man you can't see much at all so what you end up doing is doing two or three things over and over again I mean if it's not going to come off with this you ain't going to come off with anything really and I tried stopping and switch, switch uh, stopping and washing it with a bit of petrol in a sprayer and that really helped but um, the front's almost done but there's still a bit to do. Let me go and show you what, what the problem was. I hope you can see, but like I say, you can see now it's a galvanised chassis. You know, it took all that rubbish off. But what was, you couldn't really see what you were doing. Now this zinc on this uh, galvanised, on this inner arch, is was already corroded. And they've sprayed some sort of horrible stuff on it. And it has come off, but it's so hard. I mean, I tried scratching it with a screwdriver. But this is the problem, and I'll show you. This is, a, this is a good example. When I'm under here, and the glass is on, I see that dark pot patch there. I don't know if you can see very well. Let's come outside a bit. You can see that dark patch there and that bit there. And I'm thinking it's tar and what have you, because you, you can't see with the goggles on. And I'm blasting it away. But actually, this is a very good example why wax oil isn't all that good. Because the corrosion's got underneath the wax oil and the wax oil's protected it from the outside like a skin. And you can see it in various places. That's why this zinc is actually working. Now at the front it's okay because the wheel is going sort of round like this and kicking this way and then coming round this way. So this side's usually pretty good. But it's this side with all the, the road dirt and what have you. I, I think it's going to be pretty good. Like I say, there's still a few bits and pieces, but it's so hard to shift. It really is hard to shift. But I've got all the loose off. And I'll play around with this a bit more. But, uh, yeah, if it didn't have a galvanised chassis on it, it would be rubbish now. Yeah. You see, you look at look at round here. What a, what a fantastic mud trap that is. You couldn't have put it in a better place, could you? Uh Dear me. But I got all the dirt out from the towers and shot underneath. There's only so much you can do. I mean, other than that, it's uh, sandblasting and we don't want to do that. Right, lunchtime. Well, what a day. Day one. Look at the state of me. I'll tell you something. I wish, this is one of them jobs I wish I'd never took on. This stuff is so hard to get off. Like it comes off in patches and then it's really hard. So I think what I'm going to do tomorrow, because I've been on it five and a half hours. I've got a bit of a stain on my jacket. I don't know if it's going to come out or not. But anyway, and me. But anyway, uh, phew, I don't know if it's better without, without, without. Um, yeah, it's coming off. I'll run the camera around and I'll show you, but my God, what a job it is. It like, like you say, it peels off one bit and then it doesn't, and then you sort of, it's, it's like tar. It's like trying to get tar off with a steam cleaner. And I've used a full tank of diesel, that's 30 litres of diesel I think it takes, just today to get this off in the heater. And it still hasn't shifted it. So I think what I'm going to have to do tomorrow is uh, get under it with a scraper and you know, see if I can scrape and stuff off. I don't know why, uh, the, the cleaner moves it, but hmm, it doesn't, it doesn't. It just sort of melts it and then it falls off. Let's go and have a look and show you the arch. So there we go. Seven hours of washing. 
a really filthy job this stuff was an absolute bugger to get off but we got most of it we couldn't get all of it but uh, as you can see it's a lot better than it was we got rid of all that rubbish inside of there it's sort of good for us proofing there was bits we missed but by gum that was a it was a nasty nasty job in fact I was lying on that board underneath getting soaking wet getting this done so like I say steam cleaner there's a bit in that top corner I missed but honestly if it wasn't going to come off with a two and a half thousand pound power washer and hot water we ain't going to come off so I think it's going to be good um, so there you go that's that job done so now all it needs to do is dry out and then it could be rust proof but I won't be rust proofing it because it won't be here but you can see it was red before, eh? <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Alright, so I hope you like that. That's keeping your Land Rover clean. So the best thing is, before it gets too built up with dirt, wash it off. Now watch out for a further episode of this, because I'm going to show you a tool that we're going to make to wash under your vehicle. It could be interesting. So, uh, making your Land Rover better? Well, it has to do, isn't it, eh? Get all that dirt out. Talk to you later. Bye.